account? What are the top five reasons that traders blow up their account? Yeah. So if 2022 wasn't a great year for you, please write these down. I want to be able to help you out. Uh, number one, most traders take too many trades, which ends up blowing up their account because only it only takes three or four bad ones to have you draw down about 50 to 70% if you're using leverage. Um, I think you should stay within a range of 20 maximum for the year. If we have a bullish market, if we have a bearish market, you should stay within 12 trades for the year. Number two, um, not doing the inner work to heal your money traumas um, and, and working on yourself constantly to become a better person. That's why at every show, I always start with, I deserve to be happy. I deserve to be wealthy. I deserve to be rich. I deserve to be free. How many of you honestly, truly believe that you're worth two to $15 million a year? And I know, I hopefully we get a bunch in chat, but normally when I'm speaking to people, most people don't feel that they're worth that or that they deserve that amount. So you have to do that inner work to understand. So especially if you grew up poor or you were broke for a period of time, that financial trauma can seep into your life and can cause you to self-sabotage. Has anybody ever like taken a trade that they know that they were going to lose or they put on a position size that was way too heavy? Or you got on a good streak of six, seven, eight trades in a row and then your next 10 were terrible trades that you knew you should have stayed away from. So make sure you heal those traumas first to be able to do better in the market. Number three, having a very erratic workspace. So your workspace should be like a spa. Like I want you guys to meditate. And I talked about this on the Stock Club call last week, but you need to meditate before, during, and after your trading session. So I know some of you love to play rap and you like to get hyped and think that you're going to attack the market, but the market usually ends up attacking you. So you want your place to be a place in, uh, of serenity. Um, I also can tell if a person is talking too fast, if their trading is usually not going well. Um, and the last one is not having a system with a mathematical edge tied to a risk to reward ratio that is in your favor. I cannot stress that enough. Even if most of you get the direction wrong, and let's say you counter trend, if you have a risk to reward of one to 11, even on your counter trend trades, the ones that will go in your favor, you can end up making a hell of a lot of money. Now, I don't want you to counter trend trade. I want you to go with the direction. but when I ask most people when I'm out, hey, if you took 100 trades out of those 100, how many would you win? And what's the multiple that you'll get on the trades that you've taken? Most don't know. So if I ask you guys like, hey, if you put out 100 episodes, how many hits are you going to have? And out of those, let's say 8 to 12 hits, what kind of deal flow would they give you? You guys can give me an answer. For traders, if you don't know, out of 100 trades, how many you're going to win? And what's the mathematical probability of you doing that in any market? If you don't know that, you're purely gambling. And those are the five things you can do to make sure that you don't blow up your account. Ian, can we add an asterisk, of, like a number six? What are, what are your thoughts on people, not just over trading, but trading across different sectors, not focusing in? I know a lot of times, and we, and we spoke to a lot of people who are in the space. Aristotle is one of those guys when he's like, yo, I'm only trading 12 things. Like we know, we'll talk when like, yo, I'm only trading 15 to 20 times for the year. Yeah. But people who are just trading like, and there's no real plan or strategy. It's just like, kind of like speculation. It's disaster. Like those are like the real pill, real pill traders. Like they want all the trades, all the women, all the cars. Like it takes a lot to manage all that, man. <laughs> like if you, if you haven't really mastered, and that's why even when I introduced two tech, two index, that's a long-term strategy. I want you guys to stick with. And then also investing in global equities in the bond market. That is a hedge fund strategy. Um, I put it in Stock Club last week, but there was a hedge fund manager that's up 123% shorting the bond in ES future last year. You have to specialize. Um, I think people that try and be generalists end up getting destroyed. Mm -hmm. And when you really buckle down on one strategy, and you've seen us do it with the show, like, of course, like there's 19 other shows I could have done after this, but it's like, hunker down on one be good at one thing be able to rinse and repeat and all the profitability that you want to see and i don't know any traders that trades every market i don't know many traders that trades futures forex options stocks nft crypto like whatever your lane is whether it's crypto nft forex master the hell out of it get your win ratio up get your profit factor up to a high point and just focus in on that and you'll be good
No, it's important. A win ratio is important. Yeah, yes. and, that, and that's important to, to master one thing before you do another thing. And like even on the content side, like people do shows and it's like you don't have one hit show yet and you're doing another show and you're putting out more content. And it's like, well, you haven't fully figured out how to have a hit show yourself yet. So why would you have another show? Yeah. Or why would you try to mentor somebody else to have their show when you yourself have not figured it out yet? There are people out there that do that. <laughs> nah, Not, it's real, it's real. You can't be Kevin Samuels and Rachel nah, Ray real, and so. horrible. Yo, decisions, this guy man. is different. Nah, it's, nah, nah, it's, it's real talk. It's what you say is real. Now, nah, what you say is real talk. It's just like, yo, yeah. bro, you got to focus on just. You've been mattering. in the movies last two weeks. What nah, I mean, oh, nah, it, I mean, but it's real talk, right? It, it, how how can I say I'm the king of something or I've, I've mastered something if I haven't shown a certain level of success? Yeah. Right. In order for me to have a certain level of success, now I could become an authoritarian in the space or i could say like hey i've done this you've seen me do this you've seen my success here's how i can also help you become successful now will it always work no it won't because there's going to be certain factors that you can't teach right you can't teach work ethic you can't teach determination you can't teach drive like those things yeah. don't come with it i can show you how we did it but chances are you probably won't have the same type of outcome right yeah, which is it's just true yeah, I'm yeah. with you, my brother. It's true. <laughs> Information over ego. We're going to stay centered. Yes. Ego is the enemy. Stillness is the key, right? Ego is. <laughs> yes. So let's I right, let's get let's get the people what they want. Let's go over some stock reviews. Um, 10 stocks. Yeah, I'm go, yeah, I'm going to go through Lululemon first. Yes, um, yes, 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 yes. Lululemon. So, yes. Lululemon, I like a hell of a lot. Shout out to my guy, Ty. He's been invested in this since, I think, 2016. A good one. I like it at like 237.44. This is a minimum five-year hold. If you're looking for like a low at the boat price, that would be at like 210.37. I like them for the long-term athleisure, higher-end luxury brand. I like them a lot. Oh, and I want to say this about Tesla real quick. So I gave the price for Tesla. In Stock Club, if you're part of Red Panda Stock Club, I gave a like uh, depression level, big recession level price of twenty nine thirty seven. The next day, the analyst came out and said Tesla could potentially fall to thirty. There were some people who were upset. Um, I do want to say that I'm probably uh, the only person that gives out prices that are like hedge fund level prices. You can't be upset about the price. I think the price that I gave last week for Tesla is still amazing, but. Membership does have privileges. The probability of Tesla going to that price is less than 9%. If it does go to that price of 30, though, I will be more than happy to put like 40% of my net worth into that price. Be patient. And if you're only buying one share, it doesn't matter anyway. So I just had to say that and clear that up for the interwebs um, for, for context. But I, the probability of it going to 30 is very low. But if it does, you need to know those prices and where to get it in advance. Second one is WWE. Um, it's at ninety eighty seven dollars and 82 cent. Yeah. Vince, Mc, Vince McMahon is coming back. It is too high of a price to buy. Well played. I have a couple of friends in the WWE, so I don't want to say too much, but well played by Hunter to take over that man's company and then get a couple of hedge funds to take it over with him. And can we uh, stay there for two seconds? Yes. So he's coming back. We saw the price go up, obviously, for the WWE. There mm -hmm. is talk that he, he, it's going up because the potential of him selling the company. Be a great time to do so. Okay. I just wanted yeah. to get your thoughts on that. Yeah. And if they do, the, the previous high was in, I think, 2019 at like $100.45. I think it'll pop to maybe like 99 bucks and some change. Um, who was the company that acquired UFC off of Dana White? Everyone, homework assignment number one. If they acquire them, maybe in a few years, they'll have a chance to break to 120, but I don't necessarily love the stock at this price. If it ever gets back to like that $37 or $40 range, I love, um, and I will buy it then, even though I don't like the product as much as I used to. Um, stock number three, Celsius Holdings. It is at 97 bucks and some change. It is decent. Maybe at like 65 bucks or 70, I would like to take a look at it. But I do like it for the long term. Hold on, hold on for one minute, Ian. So he's giving out prices on stock. So only thing that we ask you guys is to like the video. There's four thousand people watching it, or four less than four hundred people have liked the video. That's a ten percent ratio. So if uh, Peter or Josh Brown, 
uh, Citadel, J.P. Morgan, please call us in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> so please. Rick Santinelli, like, like, Mary hit, from NBC Universal, please call me. Rick hit, hit, hit the like button. It's information, um, which is free. So hitting the like button does not cost you anything. You're already here. Fourth stock. Listen, information and value for the culture over ego. It's not about us, right? Number four, Crocs. Um, Crocs, I don't like long term. Um, yeah, Crocs, I don't like. Somebody's asked me about that. Data Dog, D D O G. Mm -hmm. Don't like. Don't like long term. Could possibly fall to 29. Um, and until we get out of this, this recession, the yield curve. Is no longer inverted and the Fed stopped raising rates. I won't touch it right now. Um, next one is DOCN, which is uh, Digital Ocean. Do not like it at all. I would not touch. I would not even swing trade this one. Next one is Shift 4 Payments. I wouldn't touch this one. But not touch. Ticker is F O U R. Maybe at $26, I would swing trade it, but I would not hold it for long term. Let's go to Meta. Meta's been like dancing up a little bit since the top of the new year. Mm -hmm. um, if I would touch it, maybe like at 113, I would swing trade it up to like 122. Um, but I'm still not sold on holding them long term yet. Next one is SWAV. Uh, Shockwave. I actually like this one. I needed to fall to like 106 before I wanted to buy it. Um. I still need you to go research the fundamentals of the company, make sure they have good net income before a swing trade. I do like it at 106. And let's go to Tesla. I just talked about that again. Um, we saw Alibaba push up the top of the year, and I said, look for Alibaba to be a canary in a coal mine to, to indicate if we're going to go up for the year. So far, we have been. The first five days of the trading year have been pretty solid. So hopefully that can continue. Um, one of the reasons that Alibaba shot up because Jack Ma is going to like solely focus on Alibaba now. If Elon decides to do the same, Tesla will shoot up a lot, even though he is in a very interesting spot where he needs Starlink to work incredibly well, which I think it will. I think it'll be one of the most dominant companies over the next 10 years. And that's going to provide some liquidity to allow him to get away from Twitter and focus on Starlink and Tesla. Um, but if they get a better executive management team or he solely focuses there, I think I think Tesla would do incredibly well over the long term. Not saying that they don't have great management now, but it's not Apple-esque. Um, and last one is XPOF. Um, exponential Fitness is too new for me to invest in. It's at 26 bucks and 24 cent. Don't love it. Um, I will have to wait at least another year for this one to play out so those are the ones i wanted to review this day red panda anthem and hey, what's up this day. red panda anthem red panda what's this good day. red panda anthem <laughs> your boy going up i know they can't stand it